Hi, welcome back to Burning River for Bushcraft. Today we're going to be looking at a belt buckle by Larry Roberts called the Mouse Buckle. So the Mouse Belt Buckle is designed by Larry Roberts. It's built by Rocky Woodland Forge. And what this is is a multi-purpose tool that can be worn on your belt every day. This belt buckle is designed to fit on an inch and a half leather belt. This is high carbon steel, so this works as a flint striker. It also works as a scraper. And on the back side, he has a divot to utilize this as a handhold for a bow drill. So a frictionless bearing block for a bow drill fire is one of the hardest items to duplicate in the woods. I have a couple uh, handholds that I use, and they all got one thing in common. They all get really hot really fast. Uh, this being that it's thicker, it might work a little better as a heat sink. Uh, I wouldn't bet on it. Uh, when I utilize this, I'm going to do my burn in, just holding on to the buckle itself. I bet you it's going to transfer heat really fast. Uh, no big deal. You can use a glove if you don't have your gloves. You know, you've got your leather belt that you can bundle up and insulate your hand from the heat of the buckle. But being how that is the primary focus of this belt buckle as a handhold, let's go ahead and make a bow drill fire and see how it works. So this is a pre-made set and I've got the belt removed from the buckle right now so we're going to get full heat transfer. Now a cool thing about this pin is as Larry designed it, it really doesn't stick past the top of the handhold so I can really get a hold of this without trying to get the pin in a proper position. I can just grab the thing and it really works no matter what the pin placement is. Alright, so you can see I'm just getting a little bit of burn right here. The bow drill is not even close to uh, shouldering out on the spindle. So far, so good. So just with that burn in, the heat transfer was not too bad. It was better than I was expecting. As far as comfort goes, uh, I've never even used a uh, bearing block like this successfully without some type of padding between my hand. Be it either a leather glove or a piece of bark or something. So, uh, they're all a little sharp. This one's very sharp. Uh, that's going to have to be addressed uh, a little bit later in the video. But, uh, definitely not comfortable to hold. But, uh, no heat transfer and so far so, so I got good. My, I got my burn in all notched. Uh, I don't have a welcome mat to catch the ember. It's pretty nasty out here right now. That's why I've got my boot off and I'm working off a tarp. I'm gonna go ahead and use the, my leather belt as a welcome mat.
I got it. And no heat issues. No heat issues. Uh, <laughs> I'm out of breath. No heat issues at all off of this. Still going here. So this is pretty rough weather out here for a tender bundle. This isn't the best tender bundle. I'll try to get it into a flame here, but you can see I've still got still got smoke here, and so far this has worked better than any of the other handholds that I've got. I think the thickness helped quite a bit. I wasn't expecting much from it, but you know, so far so good. Keeps wanting to go out on me. But that is a successful bow drill fire utilizing Larry Roberts' mouse belt buckle as a handhold. So even though this does work great for a handhold and it does make making a bow drill fire a lot easier, uh, bow drill fire should be your last resort for a fire in a wilderness situation. Uh, flint steel is a whole lot easier. Got a piece of flint here out of my kit. Well, you can see that in the sun, but this thing's just sparking pretty nice. So, having a belt buckle like this that lets you drive sparks off of it with a, a piece of flint or hard piece of rock, that with a piece of chaga or a char tin is going to give you a lot easier fire in a wilderness than a bow drill. So that's a huge advantage to a belt buckle like this. So you may stop and be asking right now, why don't I just use the back of my high carbon steel knife like you're supposed to carry in the wilderness anyway? Well, a couple reasons. I don't know how, how well you're gonna see this. This is one of my older knives and it took a while for me to learn how to do this. But you can see the spine is all beat to hell. So, most of my user knives that I've taken to classes and such are just absolutely beat up on the spine. Doesn't damage the knife really at all. This sharpens right out. But what this does is it degrades your 90 degree spine. So a lot of the, my go-to knives, the 90 degree spines aren't quite as sharp as they should be just from lack of maintenance from me. Another reason why a belt buckle like that's an advantage is I don't always carry a high carbon steel knife. Uh, sometimes I'll have a stainless knife uh, this is a like a super steel. This is 3V. So that doesn't uh, always strike with a, a rock that you're going to find off the ground. All right, so with the tin out in front of me here, I'm going to use the side of the buckle and strike down on the rock. I'm going to go for like a 12 inch arc. in a couple different places. So 
I just transferred some of the charred material into the little baby bird's nest I got here. Okay, so rock plus belt buckle plus charred material equals fire. So I think another feature that's overlooked on the Larry Roberts uh, belt buckle is the fact that it's so sharp and you have 90 degree spines on all your edges that you can utilize this as a scraper. Now, ferro rod like this would be awesome to have in the wilderness situation, but without a striker of any type, if you only had this ferro rod, you would be hard pressed to be able to strike this in the woods. Uh, you could find a beer bottle maybe a, a fence post, a nail, something like that, but you're going to have to have some kind of hard man-made material to strike this with. Uh, that is an advantage to the to the sharp 90 degree spine on the mouse belt buckle is even if you were to lose any other striking tool that you had or you had one that wasn't quite suitable for the task, your belt buckle is going to work great for a striker. So a lot of that is negated by having the proper tools in the first place, but it's a good backup option. Now remember, not all bushcraft knives are designed as survival knives. This is the classic Moore number one. Uh, this is a knife I use quite a bit around the house, and I just never have sharpened the back of the spine. I never viewed it as a survival knife. I really didn't care. So you can see I could do this all day long, and I am not going to get a fire. So if, to save using my blade, uh, that mouse belt buckle is definitely going to come in handy. The same would be true if, uh, for example, my bushcrafter that I had that I showed you how often I strike that with a uh, rock on the back of the spine. That spine's in pretty rough shape. I just don't maintain it like I should. So again, this would be a handy use for the mouse belt buckle. So utilizing the Larry Roberts belt buckle as a scraper Here's just a piece of fat wood. I'm able to make shavings or make fuzz off this stick. Alright, so here's a fire using just the mouse belt buckle as a scraper, piece of fat wood, and a ferro rod. So the belt buckle does everything uh, as advertised, plus more in my opinion. Uh, they're about 40 bucks. They're available on Larry Roberts' Back to Basic website, I believe. If not, you can message him on Facebook and get a hold of one. Uh, it's a great, great addition to your kit. Now, is this perfect? No, it's not. Uh, the first thing I was questioning when I got it is the thickness. This thing's like a quarter inch thick, and it's pretty heavy. Uh, getting it here in the woods, now I realize why it's that thick. This is the best bearing block I've used. This is the best frictionless bearing block I've used. I've used Essie. Uh, I've got a Traeger Fire Tool, and they all transfer heat a lot faster than this one. So I think the fact that it is so thick and it's got so much mass, it works better as a heat sink. So an initial impression of this was too thick. Now that I use it, I understand. Uh, so you, you can just put up with the weight with this. The issue that I'm having and the issue of other people that I've talked to, uh, Larry is a skinnier guy than I am. That's not saying a whole lot here. But uh, Larry got to go on a wilderness diet on alone. I didn't get to do that yet. Uh, if I ever do, maybe I can get as skinny as Larry. But... Uh, if you have any type of overhang, stomach, or anything else that's sticking out, this 90 degree spine is murder on your stomach. I have worn it around just a little bit, and that's going to have to get modified for me. Uh, also, 
when you slip this through, this interior here is a 90 degree spine also. So I believe I'm going to probably do it in another video. Uh, I'll just clean this up, take the 90 degree edge off of the inside so the belt slips better, do the fat man modification and grind the top edge off and round this 90 degree spine and I'll see how the bottom one goes. Now I still am going to have this outside edge as a 90 for a scraper and I've got this one too. So I'm not so worried about removing any 90 degree spine because I, there's there's like four different angles on this to use. So cutting a couple down just for comfort's sake for me, uh, that's definitely a fair trade off. So Larry, good job on your belt buckle. Uh, Great design, works just great, and I highly suggest anybody pick one up. Till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.